It means that signal. We need more power. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Voice of E. I am your host, Elliot Miller, and in this edition, we're talking about the Sundering the year-long, universe-wide event that is taking place in the Dungeons & Dragons Forgotten Realms right now. First off, I'll mention the new Sundering D&D Encounter session going on now, and then we'll listen in on an audio interview with Aaron M. Evans, the author of the soon-to-be-released third book in the Sundering series called The Adversary. Prepare to return to the fan-favored Icewind Dale region of the Forgotten Realms in the newest D&D Encounters season, beginning last week. Legacy of the Crystal Shard is the second adventure of the Sundering, a major year-long event that will reshape and define the future of the Forgotten Realms. There's even a brand new video trailer that you can see at thevoiceofe.com, or at D&D, you know that's been shaped by thousands of players' results from the last seasons of D&D Encounters. Tell the tale, live the adventure. Created by New York Times best-selling author R.A. Salvatore, along with Wizards of the Coast authors and designers James Wyatt and Jeff Ludwig, Legacy of the Crystal Shard pits players against an evil that was once defeated, but has risen again to threaten the Ten Towns. <sighs> The people of Icewind Dale have long stood against the perils of the North, and the events that shook the region a hundred years ago are now distant memories. But what was defeated was not destroyed, and as evil forces converge, adventurers will assist the people of Ten Towns who face their greatest trial yet. This D&D encounter season began already last week and runs through February 12th. Start playing and enter your results. Following participation in weekly in-store events, gamers are encouraged to use their newest digital tool from Wizards of the Coast, the Sundering Adventurers Chronicle, to report the outcomes of their play experiences, to connect with other players, and participate in activities designed to enhance the Sundering experience. You too can experience Sundering. Adventure anywhere, anytime. Adventurers can also now play the latest D&D Encounters adventures from anywhere in the world, at the same time as the in-store program. Legacy of the Crystal Shard includes a 32-page adventure book containing the major plots and encounters in the North, along with 64 pages describing Icewind Dale and its inhabitants. The set is packaged with a four-panel deluxe Dungeon Master screen with maps and information and is currently available for a suggested retail price of $34.95. That's what's going on in the stores. You too can participate in The Sundering. Now let's go to our audio interview. The interview is about 15 minutes long, so feel free to do other things while you listen, like roll up a DD and d character, or look up a DD and d encounter session near you, or practice juggling, or, well, you get the idea. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to The Voice of E. I am your host, Elliot Miller, and in this episode, I'm talking to author Aaron M. Evans. Aaron has three novels and a short story published in the Forgotten Realms Dungeons & Dragons setting, created by author Ed Greenwood way back in 1967. Her fourth novel, The Adversary, is due out December 3rd. Aaron, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Your novels are all set in The Forgotten Realms. Can you tell me how you became involved with the Forgotten Realms in the first place? Yeah, I uh, started out working as an editor for Wizards of the Coast. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked on, primarily I was the line editor for Eberron, um, but I also was the, we, we called it secondary editor for Forgotten Realms. So I handled some of the um, newer titles, like the, those standalones. Uh, and there was a series called Ed Greenwood Presents Waterdeep, which they were doing with limited call for and they needed more authors. Um, with a limited call, you sort of audition a number of authors greater than what you need so that, you know, you can pick the best ideas. But also then if your first choice is say, oh, I'm too busy or this doesn't really appeal to me, you have, you know, lots of options. So there's sort of a, you know, we need one more. Can you do it? Uh, the other editor had seen 
my personal stuff and, and said, well, you, you know, you could probably write one of these. Um, and so I pitched uh, the novel that became The Godcatcher. And uh, the editor at the time, Susan Morris, and Ed Greenwood, who was co-editing, really liked it. So I, I had to go through a couple couple more rounds of, of blind calls to make sure nobody was nobody was playing favorites. But that's how I got to write for Forgotten Realms. Oh, nice. Very cool. Hey, that's the way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was almost fate. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about The Godcatcher? The Godcatcher is one of a series of books set in the city of Waterdeep, which, you know, if you're a fan of Forgotten Realms, you know, it's sort of this big cosmopolitan city, a uh, big melting pot on the Sword Coast. Uh, it takes place around one of the walking statues of Waterdeep, which during, uh, at least during the fourth edition period, the, the statues had sort of been stopped um, as the magic had kind of made them rampage a little bit. So this particular mm -hmm. statue is now an apartment building and uh, the woman who lives in it, Tenora, one of the women who lives in it, one of the people who lives in it, Tenora, is a, she's studying to be a wizard and she's just been told, no, you're terrible at this, go find something else to do. Um, and at the same time, she uh, runs into this other woman, Nestrix, who claims that she's a dragon trapped in a human body. And she needs to uh, sort of do some things for the the landlord of the Godcatcher to, to, to get back. And they, they bump into um, a dragon that's playing this great game um, with Waterdeep as the sort of the prize. And, and it turns into kind of a, a great little adventure uh -huh. with trekking through the sewers and fighting crazy wizards and um but you know at the same time it's it's a story about identity and and sort of determining who you are and whether what people think you are what you look like on the outside and what uh people decide you must be is is as true as what you feel like you are on the inside and, and who you believe yourself to be mm -hmm. now, <laughs> now i think that your third book lesser evils is actually a sequel to your second book brimstone yes. angels now what are those about and and did you originally intend on writing a sequel um so brimstone angels came first uh it was meant to be a book that could start a series um that you know was focused on a particular character um a particular and and they wanted a tiefling um for, for this book so mm -hmm. this is this is what i ended up pitching so that's farida um and so yeah i did always intend to write uh, more books about farida so uh, Le Lesser Evils then is the second. There, it's a it's a sequel. It's kind of, they're they're a little episodic. There's there's a bigger story going on, but you know, Brimstone Angels is about the city of Neverwinter and um, sort of the big powers fighting over uh, primacy there. And then Lesser Evils is about the Harpers and the Gentarum and and Netheril um, and archaeological sites and cool monsters and, yes. and then that brings to the adversary right which is still Farida's story uh so i did when i started i i didn't it wasn't sort of of course there will be more but there needed to be room for more um but by the way by the time i was through the first draft they wanted to see more of these books so pretty early oh, on nice. i knew there were going to be sequels oh nice so we can expect more from that series oh yes i just turned in the first draft of the next book which I've been told I can't say the title of quite yet. They want to wait until adversaries like out and in people's hands, but soon I'll be able to tell people the title. <laughs> so I should so I should send you an email December fourth. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the book we're here to talk about is the adversary, which does come out December third. Yes. It's part of the Forgotten Realms event called the Sundering. Can you tell me about the Sundering and how you became involved? The, the Sundering in the World is a uh, an event that's it's kind of a slow unfolding event where um, the Overgod Ao has has sort of decided to rewrite the Tablets of Fate and and what that means is that things are going to be shaken up for the gods. Um, they don't know what that the gods themselves don't really know what that means. Does that mean that Ao is going to kind of wipe the world of Toral off the map? Um, does that mean he's going to redistribute every all the powers and, you know, Salune, the goddess of the moon, is now the goddess of livestock? Or does it mean that they need to snatch up all the power they have because at some point he's going to hit the buzzer and whatever you've got, you've got. Um, so different gods have different ideas of what's happening. That's sort of the big high level story. Mm -hmm. um, the stories themselves, the books themselves, um, the adventures are about what happens to the people in the world when these big things are happening. Um, 
So now, did you actually sit around with the other authors and plan this whole thing out? Yeah. Uh, so uh, to be fair, they, they've done several story, story summits where we come in and we talk about the stories we want to tell and how they can intersect and, and what needs to happen in the world, what needs to be discussed. Um, the first one of those, I was present only on the phone. Um, it was it was actually four days after my my son was born. So I oh, right. <laughs> while I really wanted to go, I live in I live in the same area as as the wizard. So I didn't it wasn't that I had to fly. But as much as I really wanted to drive down there, my husband was like, no, not happening. I will hide the keys. You can't just take the baby down to, a, to an office full of people because you want to talk about stories. And he was right. Um, but I, you know, I, I listened in on the conference phone and um, discussed some of it. Uh, and then the subsequent ones have been just really, really great. It's it's kind of ironic, actually, that you're all sitting around discussing the fate of a universe, kind of like, you know, God's looking over yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you put it that way. <laughs> it's it's kind of funny. funny, yeah. Uh, so what is the adversary about and how does it build on the previous two books in The Sundering? So the adversary is about my character, Farida. Um, mm -hmm. She very early on, she, she kind of makes a, a decision to try to protect the people she cares about. And that has pretty big ramifications for her. And she spends sort of the rest of the story trying to make things right. And, and when she figures out what's going on, how to make that larger problem right. Um, so in, in that sense, you know, it's about it's kind of about what you owe your friends and your allies and, and what they owe you and, and, and how, you know, that, that unit of the party almost, it, how, it, how it functions and what it means to you as an individual. Um, as far as the Sundering, this is a book where you get to see what, um, sort of how those the gods that are in conflict um, you have uh, Shar and Netheril and and the Shadowvar on one side, the, you know, the evil Shadow Empire, um, and you have uh, at the same time you have Asmodeus, the god of sin, and the nine hells, and and his arch devils on the other side, um, all trying to kind of outmaneuver each other by sort of passing information down this chain to people on the ground, and how that works, and and how um, those individuals kind of interact. Um, we've seen in the previous two books uh, the appearance of Chosen. Um, that becomes much bigger in uh, the scope of the adversary. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you see some other powers kind of realizing something's up and 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 what they need to be doing within the context of the Sundering. You know, wh where are the Harpers and, and how does they react? And um, But again, all through the idea of what these individual characters are doing. Okay, so you're kind of seeing through their eyes the larger effect of the whole sundering is having on on everything. Yeah, that's not bad. I, I'm definitely looking forward to reading it. I'm I'm only about halfway through the second book right now, so. <laughs> okay, I'll make sure I don't give you any spoilers. For, yeah, don't for give me a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, what can we expect to see next from Aaron Evans? Well, I, like I said, I just turned in a uh, first draft for the my next book, which will come out in September 2014. Um, mm -hmm. That continues Farida's story. It continues sort of the, there's there's several sort of subplots that start in the adversary that that won't be resolved until the next book. Um, it's it, this is the book I can't say this is the book where I finally get to go to Cormier. Um, when I wrote Brimstone Angels, my intention was that the next book would take this character I had Bryn. Um, mm -hmm. who is connected to uh, a royal family in Cormier, take him back to Cormier to sort of resolve his fate and his, you know, character arc. Um, and then wizards came to me and said, we really want to do a book uh, about the Gentarum coming back, but we want someone to write a book about the Harpers in relation to the Gentarum. And can you do that? You can write your Brimstone Angels book next. And I said, well, I'm just going to do both. I'll write a Brimstone Angels book about the Harpers and the Gentarum. And I'll do the Cormier book next, um, mm -hmm. which was a great plan. But then they sent me this email and said, hey, we want you to be a part of the Sundering. Uh, and when everything had kind of settled out and I, and they said, OK, you can also it could be a Brimstone Angels book, too. Uh, <laughs> I was like, nice. OK, but I, I can't go. To, I still can't go to Cormier. That'll have to be the next book. So when it came time for this 2014 book, I was like, guys, 
I'm going to Cormier whether you like it or not. <laughs> Nice. It is nice, though, that they you kind of have both series kind of wrapped in there. Uh, so your fans get to see more from uh, Brimstone Angels without having to wait, you know, that whole time. And I'm I'm not I know some authors like I know Ed Greenwood can can write a novel in a month. I don't know how he does it, <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm a little slower, especially since I have a toddler. Uh, so. There, there wasn't really an option for me to say, oh, I'll write a Brimstone Angels book, you know, and then I'll also write a, a Sundering character book. Because initially, they weren't sure they wanted they wanted a Tiefling character. Um, there was a concern that that's not, that, that the Tiefling isn't relatable. Yeah. Um, and I went to them and I said, I'm really not happy writing a book about a human just because you think it's too hard to write a Tiefling. I think I'm doing pretty well. And they, and they told me this, you know, and we don't, we don't want people to feel put off by something that doesn't resemble them. And I said, are you kidding me? I mean, you look at your lineup, your, your biggest seller is Dritz. Are you going to tell me Drow aren't really freaking weird? <laughs> and you're like, it's, it's not about what you know race they are or what class they are. It's about, it, does this person have uh, a story that I relate to? And I, I think that convinced them. Because, I mean, yeah, you look at the Drow, the Drow, that is a weird culture. The strange bunch of people That's right <laughs> but you read about dritz and and you know my my former boss the editor uh, uh who, who was a magic editor at watsi uh phil athens always said that for him dritz reminded him of the high school story right like this dritz is like the kind of geeky outcast who gets to be friends with the with the star quarterback and the cheerleader and and he finds a place with these these people who are sort of the cool kids of fantasy right the, the barbarian uh -huh. with the amazing weapon and the, the beautiful uh, archer spellcaster and 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 the dwarf king who, who sort of adopts them adopts them and, and there's this feeling of finding the family that you belong to mm -hmm. and that's the thing you relate to it's not like oh well i really feel like a spider worshiping you know drow <laughs> elf that lives underground like, that's got nothing to do with it right that's just fun fantasy details <laughs> plus you get to wear such cool costumes that's true mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, Aaron, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to talk to me, and I wish you good luck with the adversary. Now, where can we find out more about Aaron M. Evans and her work? Well, I am on Facebook. I have an author page on Facebook. Uh, it's mm -hmm. Brimstone Angels is the is the address. Uh, I'm on Twitter, and I also keep a blog at slushlush.com, S-L-U-S-H-L-U-S-H. Uh, where I am currently having an e-signing for the adversary. So if you'd like a signed copy, um, you can go there and order one, and I will send it right off to you. Oh, that is great. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Aaron. Thank you. Thanks for joining me for this Dungeons & Dragons update. And thank you to Aaron Evans for taking the time to talk to me and letting us know all about what's going on with her characters in The Sundering. Let me know if you enjoyed this update by leaving a comment or sending me an email at elliot underscore miller at voiceofe.com. Make sure to subscribe to the Voice of E channel on YouTube. Like the Voice of E on Facebook. Visit our website at voiceofe.com, as I'll have plenty of gaming, entertainment, and comic book coverage this year. And it should be a lot of fun. Thanks again. And until next time, keep your mind free. It means that we need more power.